need to call out three other YouTubers to take this uh, challenge, tag you guys. So I'm gonna call out Bud Trail. You have a nice Jeep, and your Jeep has inspired mine with your nice uh, blue interiors and all the neat customization you've done. I want to hear your Jeep story and know how you got into all of this. Well, guys, if you just saw in the intro, I've been called out to tell my Jeep story by Daggeron 9. For those of you guys that don't know what this tell your Jeep story call out is, I'll give you a quick update on it. It was started by a YouTuber named Chris Meacham. And uh, what Chris intended everyone to do is to tell their Jeep story, how you came about your Jeep, a little bit about your past cause, what you plan on doing to your Jeep. And then at the end of the story, you have to call out three other Jeep YouTubers to tell their story. So, like I said, I've been called out by Daggeron9 to tell my story. So, I'm going to tell my story. I'm just going to give you guys a quick walk around the Jeep as I talk. Um, I might actually get inside the Jeep in the fuel and the air conditioner. It is real feel of 102 degrees in New York City right now. It is nasty, hot, and humid. So... But in the meantime, I just start telling a little bit about uh, my Jeep story, how I came to get the Jeep. So, cars I had in the past. So, I'm driving now about 25 years. Yeah, I'm showing my age. I've had numerous, numerous cars. I've definitely had at least 20 cars. I normally don't hold on to cars long. Usually a year or so and I'll get rid of them. I've had, uh, I've always liked SUVs. I had a bunch of Chevy Blazers, uh, I've had Ford Explorers, two and four doors. I've had a couple sports cars in between that, a couple Honda Civic SIs, a um, couple Caddies in my younger Brooklyn days. Um, besides the Jeep, which is probably one of my favorite cars that I've had, I had a Honda Element, and I had that was the longest I've ever owned a car. I had the Honda Element for four years. I'd never owned a car for four years. I have the Jeep coming on two, and this is the second longest. I usually get rid of it within a year or two. The Honda Element is almost like the Jeep community. They have a great community. They do a lot of camping together. I've taken that all over the place to do a lot of camping trips when my son was younger. We had tents. Like the Jeep, you could accessorize the hell out of the Honda Elements. And, uh... I had, like I said, I had it for four years. It was getting up there in age. It was over 100,000 miles. Things started going wrong with it. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna get rid of it. And that was an extremely hard decision for me. I loved that little car. That thing was great. I winded up putting that thing for sale on eBay and it sold in a day. And if I tell you, I got back what I paid for it four years later and I am not joking. I bought that car. I'm gonna say for like $9,600, I kept it four years and I sold it for nine grand in one day on eBay. So I have no regrets. Unfortunately, Honda, shame on you for stop making that car. I was going to, I was definitely gonna buy another one. That car was great, but like I said, Honda stopped making it. I believe they stopped making it because it was only a four seater and the CRVs are five seaters and they were selling a lot quicker. So they stopped making the car. So I went, uh, I went and I had a couple Honda Civic SIs in between that. But in all the years, I, I, I always wanted a Jeep. I always wanted a Wrangler. I always thought they were cool. Sorry to you four-door Jeepers, but I've always wanted a two-door. I am not a four-door Jeep person. They're nice. If it fits you, that's great. But for me personally, I don't have a lot of kids. I have a teenager that's on his way to college in a couple weeks. And... My wife was really, she doesn't even drive. So for me, it was, it was a no, no, no brainer. I wanted a two door. Finding two door Jeeps is not the easiest as we know. Four doors are all over the place here in New York City. Two doors are not. So dealers that have two door Jeeps, they, uh, they, they boost up the prices and they're not haggling. I don't know about other states, but um, in New York, they, they do not haggle with two door Jeeps. So I winded up, I wound up looking, I wound up doing some researching and I came across where it's in front of you. I just 
it was a spur of the moment buy. I just happened to be driving past the dealer one day and this beauty was sitting right in front. And I says, wow, let me pull over. Well, we all know what happens when you pull over to look at a car that you like. This is what happens, you take it home with you. And it's been two years, August would be two years, August 5th would be two years. So next month would be two years I have this and I have had nothing but a ball of fun. It did come with the hard top, not the soft top. So the first thing I wanted without a doubt was a, a soft top. I was on Craigslist from the first, I came home with this on a Saturday. That night I was on Craigslist searching for soft tops. I wanted nothing to do with the hard top. And it took a few weeks and I found it. I found the guy uh, local who sold me his soft top OEM for a really good price. I hope you guys don't mind me keep walking around. I'm just trying to stay out of the sun. It is, like I said earlier, it's ridiculously hot. So um, I got the soft top and that was, like I said, the first thing I wanted to do to it. And I was happy, you know, it was a stock. It's the, uh, it's not a Rubicon or anything. It's the, it's the S24, it's the Sport, it's a 2016 Sport S24 package, which came with different wheels and stuff, which I don't even have no more. I'll get into that in a later. Um, of course, when you're looking at Jeeps, everybody who's not paying for it would tell you, oh, you need a Rubicon, you need a Rubicon. Yeah, that's because they're not paying for it. So if they were paying for it, they wouldn't. So this was in my price range where my payments wanted to be. So I got the soft top, getting back to that. Um, then weeks later, my brother also has a Jeep. Made an appointment for Rouch Creek. We gotta go out to Rouch Creek. I ended up taking a 101 class with Kyle out at Rouch Creek. It's the first off-roading, I've real off-roading I've done. I've, I've had a Hummer H2, no, I'm sorry, H3. I had a, a Hummer H3 that I leased in 2007 and 2008. I did some off-roading with that, but it, nothing crazy. Nothing like I did with the Jeep. So the first real Rouch Creek trip with the Jeep, and I was hooked. That was it. I was hooked. So I knew I wanted to upgrade some stuff. I didn't know exactly what to upgrade. So I did watch a video. I don't know if you guys subscribe to him. Auto Edit, Jason Lewis. And in one of his videos, he talks about taking your Jeep, stock, off-roading a few times. Don't just go buy stuff that you think you want. Take your Jeep off-roading and see what you need and buy it from that. And that was one of the best advices. One of, that was the greatest advice. And I'm glad I listened to him because from that is where I started to build my Jeep. I didn't just go buy stuff that I didn't need because it looks cool. So the first trip to Rouch Creek, I had a, the, the tires were okay that it came with, but I knew I needed better tires. So I looked on Craigslist uh, about two hours away. I found a guy with a brand new Rubicon who upgraded it. I made him an offer and these are his rims and tires. Sold them to me for like 800, all five rims and tires with the tire sensor. And then I took my stock tires and I sold them for like six and change on Craigslist. So it only cost me a couple hundred to upgrade. Then I also scraped up the front bumper. Another trip to Rouge Creek or out in Jersey. One of those, I scraped up the front bumper pretty good. So I said, you know what? Time for a new front bumper. I wind it up with this. So this is the Trail Force HD mid-width. And if I'm doing the front bumper and I'm doing some off-roading, I may as well get a winch. It's, so, it's under there, guys. I have the uh, Smitty built H2O or X2O, 10,000 pound wireless winch. A, a couple more trips to Rouch Creek, because now after that first class, I was kind of hooked on off-roading. A few more trips to Rouch Creek, and I wound up banging up the rear bumper. So... That's when I winded up going with the DV8. This is an off-road bumper that has sp angles. And it's hard to tell because the sun is so bright today. Just give you guys another view. So a few more trips to Rouch Creek. And uh, there, went, there went the bumpers. 
The Fenders, I really never screwed up a Fender. I just never liked the big, ugly, stock plastic Fenders. So I wound up going with the Smitty Builts. And I am in love with these. They're cheap. They are, as you can see a view here, they're metal. Uh, what else can I tell you about, the, about my Jeep? My, my Jeep story. I mean, that's basically it. I have this two years now. There's still some more stuff to come. But when you got a, you know, when you got a kid starting college, you got to put the money where it belongs. So the CB, the Bartek seat covers. Oh my God, is it hot in here? 67 designs mount. And a lot of this stuff I'm talking about is already on my page. You guys could just go see it. My grab handles, grab handles there. So that's my Jeep story. What I plan on doing to it, it's definitely gonna get at least a two and a half inch lift. This is my daily driver, so I'm not going nuts with big lifts and big tires. I think right now I'm leaning towards the AEV two and a half inch lift, and I'm gonna put on 33s. And I think that's gonna be it suspension wise. Um, that's what I'm leaning towards now. Again, this is my daily driver in New York City. So, this got to get me from point A to point B. It's got to get me to and from work. And that's really it. I'm sure I left out some stuff I wanted to talk about. But, again, I don't want to make this a long, boring video. But it is 102 degrees out here. Subscribe. Just like the sticker says, guys. Subscribe. So, now my video is ending. And now... I have to, oh, you know what else I want to talk about? Before I actually call out three more people that I'm going to talk about this. Another thing I did with this Jeep was I took this Jeep off-road into Michigan. I met up with another great YouTuber, that guy Mike. And that alone, that trip, Adam I went to New York City. We drove down to Michigan and we off-roaded all weekend. And that trip alone is one of the reasons I bought this Jeep. Just to do off-roading and go meet some new people. And like I said, I've been to Jersey, I've been to Rouch Creek a bunch of times, but nothing was like driving 13 hours to Michigan. And for the first time in my life, we got to off-road in the sand dunes. I've never really uh, off-road in the sand dunes before. And that was the time of our lives. So, Mike, thanks for that experience. I know you moved now, you're in Tennessee, and uh, we will come down there. I will get with Adam, we'll get our schedules together, and uh, we will see you in Tennessee, brother. And that's it. So now I'm going to call out three more YouTubers for them to tell us their story. And speaking of Mike, guess what, Mike? You're getting called out by Mud Trail. That's right. That guy, Mike. Let's hear your story. Let's hear what got you into your Jeep. And as I know you're doing a lot of modifications for your Jeep, which I'm not going to talk about. We'll let you talk about it, since it's your story. The second person I'm calling out is Tony from T Mogo 116 down in Florida. He's got another great channel, another great Jeep. I'm one of his subscribers. Every time uh, I got that bell icon, every time he puts up a video, I look forward to watching it. And uh, I want to hear your story, Tony. T Mogul 116. What got you into it? What got you into your Jeep? The second, I'm sorry, the third person that's getting called out is another YouTube channel. And this is a couple. And this is Light Bright. So, Light Bright, we have 4,300 subscribers. Tell us your Jeep story. I want to know about it. They are a couple. I don't know what state they're in, I forget off the top of my head. But. They had a JK, which they got rid of and then got a great JL and got rid of that JL for some problems and they're on their second JL. And I give them so much credit. I love watching their videos. They both, male and female, they have nerves of steel. They take a stock, a stock Jeep and go on places they don't belong and they make it on and off the trails. They really put their Jeeps to the test and they have a ball doing it. They have fun doing it. And that's what it's all about. Like I said, they are 
a Jeep couple and you don't really see that often. You don't see too many uh, Jeep couples. So, light bright, let's go. You've been called out by mud trails. Let's hear uh, your Jeep story and how you guys got into the Jeep. So, that's gonna conclude this video because I'm going back into the air conditioner now. So, all right guys. Today's July 1st, 4th of July is a couple days away. Everybody have a fun and safe 4th of July and stay cool. Thanks.